No more foreplay. Funk Jensen and Martin Campbell joined us on Watch From Home Theater for a viewing of GoldenEye, the director of the iconic entry into the James Bond franchise and the actress behind Xenia Onatop, one of the best hench people in the history of 007, shared some incredible insights into the making of GoldenEye, starting with the opening sequence and one of the coolest bungee jumps ever put to film. This is in Switzerland and uh, he did the jump and he did one take. This was it. And what's so fantastic, if you look at it, we have them, they're all real, no digital, no wire removal, nothing, all for real. Now we go to the wide shot. Now look at the close-up, see where he pulls, see where he pulls the gun. Watch him pull the gun, it's a fantastic. Oh my God. He pulls it, he points yeah. it, watch this, and he just disappears behind the rock. Just, I mean, incredible just in time, to... time. Yeah, I mean, and that was one take. This being Pierce Brosnan's first outing as Bond, we asked the director if there was any pressure to top every other Bond that had come before. No, it's, it's not that so much, but you do sit down and talk about uh, what can we do that's never been done before. You know, I think the greatest opening Bond sequence is that guy skiing off the, you know, um, uh, I think it's the Spy Who Loved Me, uh, where he, 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 he skis off the mountain all in one shot. I think it's the most fantastic. So in a funny way, we, we had that in mind when we did this. GoldenEye's version of skiing off the mountain, unlike the one-take bungee jump, took a little more time to get right. But this shot here is real. All real. No wow. digital, nothing. All that is absolutely real. Se seven takes, seven motorcycles destroyed. Um, oh my God. But in order, to, in, in order to get the motorcycle and the plane, because this, obviously the plane has to come in low and at speed and the motorcycle, queuing the motorcycle at the same time so that they could uh, both being shot at the same time, uh, was that was seven takes. But why stop there? Seven motorcycles is too small a price to pay for a Bond film, and Xenia Anatop's red Ferrari was another casualty. It did get damaged on one car, on one it cut did. with the stunt drive, and it cost them $80,000 to repair and the bloody thing. From, so. from what I remember, he was crying, and he was, you know, <laughs> I had a male, I had a male stunt, person for the you know I had a, a stunned man to double me for the driving sequence and because I think they all belonged to the Ferrari but I can't remember and so it was yeah, it was a big deal when that car crashed and I remember sort of the the eyelashes and like everything going <laughs> motorcycles and cars weren't the only thing that took damage on the film though the incredible steam room fight scene between Bond and Xenia left Fomka Jensen a little worse for wear herself I broke my rib during the scene I know, I, I remember. Know. Yes. Did, well, yes, the, the walls were padded, and um, and Pierce was, you know, throwing me up against the wall, and I said to Pierce, just don't worry about it. Just really, just throw me hard, because I don't want to have to act too much, and it's going to look fake, and I don't want to have to fake it, so just do it. <laughs> and he did it. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. Um, so we had to stop filming for a bit, and... Uh, then it wasn't until I came back to America that I found out that I had broken a rib. As iconic as that steam room fight scene is, perhaps the most lasting image from the film is the tank chase through St. Petersburg. I asked about the Bond theme song blasting in the score as the tank blasts through the wall, but that wasn't initially the music that was featured in the scene. Yeah, let me be honest with you. So, I was not that happy with the music in the film. I don't think it's, uh, I, I was disappointed in it. Three or four composers turned this film down before we'd shot it. John Barry I went to first, who of course, you know, established Bond in many of the Bond films. I loved his music. And so, so on the fourth one, I'd seen the, I'd seen the, um, uh, uh, the professional. And I just thought in keeping with bringing Bond up to date, he would be a perfect candidate for it. But in all honesty, I was disappeared in, uh, disappointed in the music. And again, you know, our budget was uh, not that much and it was limited to what we could do. And when I was dubbing the tank chase, the music that came in for that was in exactly the same register as the tanks, right? So in other words, it disappeared. And uh, so I rang Eric from London, he lives in France, of course, and said, look, we have a real problem here. And uh, I remember um, saying to him, look, we have to 
you, no point in using synths for this because it'll just disappear. I said, what we need is the Bond theme, and you always use percussion and brass to crash through all the effects. And I remember his answer to me was, well, lower the effects. So what I did was uh, say, I'm not going to do that. So that was the end of our conversation. He had an assistant who had composed some music in, in London. He'd done a couple of movies, done a very good job. He was his sort of man in not French, he was English. So <clears throat> it was a Thursday. I said, you've got the weekend. You take this sequence home. I want the one theme. You use brass and percussion. And by Tuesday, I have to record this thing, right? So I said, that's what you're doing this weekend. You are going to compose this. And he did. And that's what you heard. <laughs> and that's why there's a disparity between what he did and what, what, what the rest of the film does. But with a relatively small for a Bond film budget of $60 million and the director's preference for practicals, Martin Campbell pointed out all the incredible model and miniature work featured in the film. Seriously, all of it. Kind of now, this is all model. Shots. Yeah, all the satellite obviously is all model. This is all practical. It's all model. Model, all model. Model, all model. It's obviously models. What you see next, the wide shot, that is forced perspective. That uh, huge dish you see is no more than about 20 feet high, um, and it's a model, all model. That's that's a model. This is all model. Sorry to interrupt, but he, he, the this is all model. That low angle shot of a helicopter coming up out of a train. That's is... a real helicopter. It's not a model. It's actually the real. That was thing. that was not a model. No, it was not a model. It looks we found, like a we model. We found one thing that was not a model. Yeah. <laughs> For more fascinating GoldenEye behind-the-scenes insight from Martin Campbell and Famke Jansen, be sure and check out the complete episode of Watch From Home Theater. And for everything else, subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.